In this lecture, we are going to define the differential of a differentiable map between differentiable manifolds. And uh, what it is interesting is that this lecture is essentially going to be about the chain rule. In order to define this differential, we need to use the chain rule just to show that it is well-defined. And once we can define it and uh, we show that the natural definition that we can give in local chars actually does not depend on them, does not depend on the choice of local chars, then the differential map itself satisfies the chain rule. So far, we defined the time and space at a point and the time and space manifold, which is obtained as the joint union of the time and space spaces of M at any of its points. But uh, we want to define the differential or the derivative of a map, a differentiable map between differentiable manifolds. First, at a point. Our first goal is defining the differential of f at a point x, which should be a linear map between the tangent space of the manifold n at the point x and the tangent space of the manifold n at the point f of x. Okay, that's what we want. And uh, in order to do this, the easiest way is almost always uh, transferring the study of these properties to Euclidean spaces by using local charts. And that's what we're going to do in this case. So consider a point X in our manifold and a local chart phi sub i which is defined in a neighborhood of x. And consider a local chart for the second manifold, n, defined in a neighborhood of y, which is just the image of x by f. In this situation, we can define the differential of f at x at uh, the points of the time space of n at x. All of them are of this form, are equivalent classes of points of the form x, i, u. And we define them as the class of f of x, j, here the j is related to this local chart, and the differential, the image by the differential uh, of the expression of f in these two local charts at the point phi sub i of x. Okay? This, uh, actually, we have to check out if this definition is actually, uh, is, is actually a good definition if, uh, because we are working with equivalence classes, so it's not totally obvious. What do I mean by that? We could have a, a situation like this in which the, we, we could have two different representatives for the same tangent vector at x. And what we do need to show is that actually the, the images are also in the same equivalence class. So what we need to see is that this property we're here implies that fx, okay, so in order to fix ideas, let's say that phi sub i and phi sub i prime are uh, local charts uh, defined in a neighborhood of x in M. 
And in the same way, we consider size sub j and size sub j prime local charts defined in a neighborhood of y in n, okay? The phi's are local charts in m, the size are local charts in n. So uh, here we are using the charts phi sub i and psi sub j in order to define this differential of f at x. But we could use the charts psi sub i prime and psi sub j prime. Okay, and in, in these charts, we have that uh, the class of a vector of the form xiu is going to be the class of something of the form xi prime b. And this u and this b are identified by the differential of the coordinate change. And uh, if we just take a look to the definition, the image of the class of xiu is going to be fxj and here the differential at the point phi sub i of x of the expression of f in the charts phi sub i and psi sub j. Okay. But if we use the chart psi sub j prime in order to define this, what we get is the class of fx j prime and here the differential of the point phi sub i prime of x and the expression of f in the charts phi sub i prime and psi sub j prime. Okay. And so what we need to show is that the fact that these classes are, the classes of these two points are the same imply that the classes of these two points are also the same. And this is essentially, again, the chain rule. So we are going to have a definition of uh, the differential of F at X. And since uh, this map over here is linear, this differential of f at x is going to be a linear map between the tangent space of m at x and the tangent space of n at y, okay? So it's well defined, and because of that, we can define also the differential of f. Once, uh, Okay, once the differential of f at x is well defined for every x, we can define the differential, for instance, at a vector alpha that belongs to the tangent space of m at x. It's going to be just the differential of f at the point x applied to alpha, and this belongs to the tangent space of n at the point f of x, and in particular, to the tangent space of n. So we are going to have here a differential, which is going to be defined from the tangent space uh, to m to the tangent space to n, okay? Uh, an interesting question is whether or not this uh, differential of f is actually differential. And what do we have to do in order to check out whether or not that's true? It's always the same. We just have to express this map in local charts. But, uh, okay. It's well defined by the chain rule as I said you can check it out it's not a difficult exercise but uh, what we want now is uh, showing that this 
differential of f is actually a differentiable map. So we have these maps phi sub i prime, which were the local charts for the tangent manifold. Okay, let's remember, let's remind ourselves, okay, that phi sub i was a local chart uh, for the manifold M. And phi sub i prime is a bijection between the disjoint union for all the points in U sub i of the tangent spaces of M at any of these points and the tangent space of B sub i, which is just B sub i times R to the M. Well, in our case, it should be R to the M because here we are considering that the dimension of big M is a small M. So we are going to have phi i prime, which is giving us the natural identification between the tangent space to u sub i and the tangent space to b sub i. And because of that, it is natural to call this, sorry, the, the, the different, the d of phi sub i. So what we want now is expressing the differential of f in these local charts, phi sub i prime or d of phi sub i. Okay? And the expression is not difficult to, to actually find. It's applied to something of the form y u. You have to understand that y is in an open subset of r to the m, and u is also a vector in r to the m. What we have is that expression local charts have two components. In the first one, we just have the usual coordinate change. No, the usual, sorry. The expression of DDF, let's, let's say this uh, properly. The expression of DDF in these two local charts, D of phi sub i, which is a local chart for the tangent space of M, and D of psi sub j, which is a local chart for the tangent space to M, splits in two components. The first one is just the expression of f in the charts phi sub i and psi sub j. And we all know that that's going to be CR. If the two manifolds, if m and n are CR manifolds, then this thing over here is also CR. And in the second component, we have the differential of the expression of in local charts of F at the point Y applied to U. So in the first component, we have the local expression of F and in the second one, essentially the differential of the local expression of F. And if f is CR, the local expression of f is CR, and the differential of the local expression of f is CR minus 1. So the differential of f is, if f is also CR, okay, let's consider here that everything is CR, m, n, and f, then the differential of m is CR minus 1. It's a CR minus one map between CR minus one manifolds because the tangent space to M and M are also CR minus one. Okay, so this is what we get. If F is a CR map between M and N, then the differential is a CR minus one map between the tangent spaces to M and N. Uh, okay, something else. Uh, that we get in the Euclidean case is that the chain rule holds. If we have 
a map F uh, and a map G that are CR, the composition satisfies that the differential of the composition is the composition of the differentials. That's the chain rule. And this property over here, it's going to hold also in our abstract case, because what we do is just transferring uh, this property to the Euclidean case, and then realizing that in there, it's just the chain rule. Notice that the differential of F is a map between the tangent space to M and the tangent space to M. The differential of G is the map between the tangent space to M and the tangent space to P, and the differential of the composition is a map between the tangent space to M and the tangent space to P. So it makes sense to uh, compose DF and DG and then comparing with the differential of F composed with G. At least the, the source and the target space coincide. And the fact that these maps, that we have this equality of maps, it's just the chain rule. Okay, as I said, the result holds true for Euclidean spaces and the general proof is obtained just by considering local coordinates. That's a program that we follow in many, many cases. Transfer our properties to the Euclidean case, uh, realizing that in the Euclidean case, they actually correspond to something that we already know and then bringing them back. And the, almost in these cases, the almost the unique problem is that uh, in this transfer, you have to actually be sure that what you do is independent on the choice of local charts. In the last few lectures, we discussed the definition of the derivative of a differentiable mass between differentiable manifolds. First of all, we were forced to define the, the spaces in which these maps are well defined because the derivative of a map at a point is a linear map between vector spaces. And so we needed to define the tangent spaces of uh, a manifold at a at one of its points, and then showing that uh, such space is actually a vector space. Besides that, we needed to give a structure of differentiable manifold to the disjoint union of the tangent spaces of the manifold at all of its points. And finally, once it was uh, more or less clear by actually using local charts, what the differential of a differentiable map should be, we saw that in such a context, the chain rule holds. Because once everything is intrinsic, the properties, the local properties that we know for differentiable maps between uh, open subsets of Euclidean spaces hold in this more general setting. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss some very, very well-known concepts of the theory of differentiable maps, concepts that uh, we can actually find in courses of analysis, like uh, immersions, submersions, that can be uh, immediately generalized to the case of differentiable maps between abstract manifolds. Thank you for your attention.